Yes, thank you very much that I can uh, introduce you a very special project. Um, actually, um, there, is, there was no funding behind it. It uh, was done uh, by David Sackmeister and uh, Johnny Zelga. Please raise your hands. <laughs> they are actually students uh, in this book, and it was their diploma work for the uh, high school uh, uh, diploma. And um, it was really a pleasure to work together with them. They were supervised by Albert Kreinecker, who worked uh, some years uh, at the university and is now a teacher. The idea uh, was presented, uh, there was an idea from my side, um, a very simple idea which I will present to you today. Um, and uh, again, uh, thanks for this uh, great collaboration that, we, that uh, it came into being. I will talk about five uh, short pieces, give you a short introduction, then uh, list some crowdsourcing approaches for OCR correction, uh, describe our approach, uh, say some words about the evaluation, and uh, some ideas for the future work. Yeah, as we have seen, um, the, we have now uh, actually millions of pages available uh, which are digitized and in many cases, not in all cases, e.g. in Germany, still a lot of images have not been OCR processed so far. Uh, but um, there is now the chance to work with uh, really large data sets. Um, on the other hand, we all do not really know how good the data are. E.g. if we search in Google Books, um, it's hard to predict how um, good how good the results will be if you break down it to the language, to the century, or decade, or to the text type, and so on. So that's um, actually missing. Uh, but it's important for the end users to know what is the, what can they expect from uh, the text they are searching in. And they are often used to expect um, um, recognition rates um, near to 200% or near to what they uh, are used with um, digital born texts. Now, um, <clears throat> the overall recognition rates in uh, terms of word error rates are typically between 10 and 40%, depending on the documents. Um, we have heard that uh, I think you had also the figure of 20% error rate um, and uh, Simon Tanner did um, a large-scale um, uh, evaluation of British newspaper, uh, newspapers and he said a 22% word error rate for standard words and 31% for significant words. So <clears throat> for the user, this means that uh, searching a collection uh, for an interesting item will lead to the fact that he misses 20 or 30 percent of all occurrences. I mean, if we think on how users are using digitized collections, um, we must not forget that many users really are reading uh, the newspapers or the, the texts. Um, I, um, I got the story from, from the National Library of Austria that they had one user, they had a user meeting, and one user told them that he had read the complete um, Tyrolean newspaper from 1857 to 1916. 10,000 of pages, but he did it, I think, in two or three years. So people are reading the original image, and also researchers are interested in searching, but with the overall goal to, to get access to the content, to understand the content. Uh, so <clears throat> if they miss something, this is um, maybe acceptable to some users, but not acceptable to um, specific users, such as researchers or family historians looking for their family names uh, and, and with a strong interest really to find all occurrences. Um, also, we have to see that uh, in some collections, um, frequent words are not frequent, e.g. London, uh, 
uh, in, um, in a Tyrolean newspaper isn't uh, a frequent word but seldom. So uh, it would make sense for a user to, to see what uh, is written about London in the late 19th century in South Tyrol. Okay, crowdsourcing, as we have already heard, um, is um, um, an, an ideal field for OCR correction because it's rather simple to, um, to realize. Uh, there's an image and there's a text and you can edit it and the user might correct it. Um, if we see what has actually happened in that field, I found more or less three and a half main approaches to that uh, uh, problem. We have the recapture, the Australian National Library. I'm very happy to hear that uh, one of the inventors is here. Uh, and the National Library of Finland, uh, who tried a, a kind of game. And IBM, the concert tool. Just to, that you can um, remember, I, I think uh, I need not to say very much about uh, recapture. It's probably the most successful and most effective um, um, tool, but um, it's um, more or less just for the sake of uh, a company. And um, it's closed uh, actually to the public, except that Google texts become better every day. They claim that some millions um, uh, of words are improved every day. The Australian National Library, uh, you also know this um, project. Um, they say that about 100,000 edits have been done per day. I don't know if these are complete lines or just uh, how they really count it, but anyway, there's a strong community behind and they have the chance to uh, correct the text on line level. Again, you see the image and you uh, can quickly uh, contribute by doing some uh, 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 text correction. And uh, also a project which received a lot of um, uh, public uh, attention uh, was a digital code from the National Library of Finland. There are two people had to play a kind of game and if they used uh, the same word then uh, they could build a bridge over a river and uh, got some uh, credits. Um, um, a tool which didn't really come into being, so uh, some clever artificial, artificial intelligence um, was, is behind, uh, was uh, from IBM, the concert tool. Um, they had um, several sessions, starting from glyphs, uh, where the user had to um, approve certain glyphs uh, also on the word level and this would go into an adaptive OCI engine and the adaptive OCI engine would then um, provide better results which was actually the case but uh, the costs of uh, providing input were rather high and, and so far as I know uh, no library actually didn't take it up. I have to say that also the the game from uh, National Library of Finland uh, wasn't uh, taken up. Okay, so if we, if we conclude, there is um, a chance to do something with um, uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, is if that the, 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 the users uh, need to um, uh, have some benefit by doing this, uh, e.g. in the case of the Australian National Library, in correcting, also users can read the text. Um, they will afterwards find corrected words immediately and they can decide what they want to correct. But if we look at um, crowdsourcing projects, we also can see that the crowd is in some way a mythical thing. In reality, only some power users are actually carrying out the work. Um, the, the figures from Australia, the top six users corrected about 25% of the texts. I don't know if this is still the case, but uh, it was the case when they did the evaluation. And in the Transcribe Bentham project, which is also a very well-known crowdsourcing project, the top seven users produced 70% of all transcripts 
and more than 1,500 users were registered. Okay, so let's take this into uh, in, 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 in the back. Now the idea was let's combine searching and crowd-based correction. Um, provide users with a powerful instrument to correct exactly those words uh, where they are interested in. And searching means typically that someone is interested in a specific topic or uh, um, issue. And um, another idea was relieve users from actually editing words but let them just approve or reject the results of the OCR, OCR engine. Um, so, the user interface um, is uh, rather simple. It um, is uh, the usual, it, it is based on the Lucene search engine. Uh, it allows to uh, set uh, uh, edit distance of uh, um, null, one, or two. Uh, it, it allows to show approved words or not. I will explain later on what it means. And it allows to show word snippets or not. Um, and <clears throat> so in this way, the users can play around. They have an influence on the recall uh, of the system uh, with the edit distance. Uh, they see the index. You will see later on uh, what they get. And uh, they see what already has been done, the actually approved words from other users. So the result page um, has uh, some features, as we can see here. We see all the word snippets, um, and we see four buttons. These four buttons um, select all. You may select them as false or as correct, depending on are there more correct words or more false words. Um, a red, in red, a word snippet does not represent the correct text which we were searching for. And green, a word snippet represents the correct text, so the match between search term and word snippet. You can also deselect it, as I already said, reverse the selection and save your selection. Save means that green words, uh, green word snippets, uh, that, that, that the text is either approved, if word snippet and search term are the same, or that um, um, they are corrected by the correct search term. And the red word snippet, nothing is changed on the OCR text so far. If we have larger sets, um, let's have a closer look to the result page uh, once again. There are two more features. On the one hand, you can see here uh, that in that case, uh, we have some hundreds of results. So we can, we order them currently um, 150 word snippets at once. And on the right hand side, we show the, the index, the words, the, the, the tokens, which are behind these word snippets. And uh, <coughs> um, yeah. Um, the order of the word snippets is uh, currently just by file path. That's rather easy. We could also order it by word confidence. And as I already said, the index on the right hand side is rather interesting because um, it, it lists the terms which are behind the fuzzy search. Um, also the number of occurrences are shown so that the user gets an immediate impression how many um, snippets are behind this result. Uh, and the user mm, is able to decide very quickly what are real words or where are probably um, OCR errors behind. Now, if we come to the correction strategies, um, when we started the project, we, we thought, okay, we just present the snippets and the user goes through the snippets and says more or less yes or no. Um, this is certainly one, one chance, and if he does it, um, the, the correction status true, approved, is actually written into the alto file, uh, which lies uh, behind 
this uh, application. So if we, if we search for Nelle, uh, we can see that there are a lot of OCR errors. It's confused with Neue. Probably your engine would solve this, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but uh, you can see there are OCR errors, so we would select the correct ones. And uh, these green ones would now written to the Alto files as approved. Um, so this was for improving the precision, but we also would like to improve the recall. So we search for a word with the added distance of one or two, and certainly the number of hits increases significantly. It, it depends on the word length, it depends on the word itself, how many neighbors does it have. Um, anyway, it's hard to predict, uh, but um, um, you simply try it out and you see what happens. Um, so, the one strategy would be to go through all these hits and say yes and no, but that takes rather long. So, might, there might be another correction strategy. Uh, the user goes for all tokens which are real words, uh, which um, appear to him in the index and, and, and from his language feeling he, he, he can say this very quickly. And by clicking on one word of this, uh, of this index, a search, a new search is triggered with an edit distance of null. And this means that um, um, the exact cases are provided. Sometimes they have OCR errors, as we have seen before, but in many cases they are rather good. So the approval is rather fast and simple because you see all the same words and uh, you can you have the chance to say very quickly for 150 word snippets yes or no. So this would look like this. Um, this is the first uh, result page for edit distance 2. On the right hand side you see all the different uh, occurrences or, or, or tokens uh, which are behind this. Uh, and then to, to, to give you a better impression, um, I um, marked the index um, here in red and, and green. So the greens are real words, the red are typical OCR errors. So the user would click on the green ones and get very likely results which are correct. I proved them. And since we have this um, feature that the user uh, can decide if already approved words are shown to him or not, uh, he will see always less, uh, less uh, word snippets. Um, so we clicked here on, on one index uh, um, token on the right hand side. We see that there is no mistake and approve it uh, uh, very quickly. Um, <coughs> so um, if we do this for the for the for the um, for, for the real words, uh, we come to the end, and uh, we get instead of 324 word snippets for fireware fire brigade, uh, we get only those which uh, were not approved before, and we can simply correct now the real OCR errors just by selecting them and marking them as green. And then the, um, uh, the, the correct uh, word is written again to the Alto file as a substitute for the original, uh, for the original value. We have implemented this uh, simple system um, within a test set of 16,000 pages, all Metz Alto files, newspaper pages from the Testman library. As part of the EU newspaper uh, project, we used standard technology, Java, JavaScript, Lucene. The images are cropped on the fly and kept in a cache. Um, that's more or less the hardest task or takes the longest time. But um, actually, it's, it's uh, just some seconds you are waiting for the first 150 snippets. And, um, 
those who are interested might try it out. It's uh, online. It's not a stable link. We just uh, put it online so that uh, if people are interested, uh, can have a look at it. So, I mean, from playing around with this tool, and this is more or less a kind of proof of concept, um, we, we, get, we have the chance that we can improve position and recall of search terms in a rather quick and straightforward way. I mean, the overall benefit would be that the user then can rely that he will find all search terms he is interested in. Um, I think also mm, the, that we relieve the, the user from editing actually text um, is, is uh, more or less self-explaining and, and um, is rather easy to understand. And it's a kind of a snowball system since you approve also um, the, 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 some words when you are, when you are uh, um, correcting one word you are also approving some other words and, and so you get interesting neighbors and interesting connections and um, it's kind of fun, I even would say. Okay, we cannot present you a real evaluation. I'm finishing. Uh, just some remarks on, uh, um, I, I mean, there is a, a very comprehensive uh, publication on crowdsourcing system on the World Wide Web, and they have four questions. Um, I think I have to close. Um, maybe very short. These four criteria, how to recruit and retain users. Um, the main idea is they are searching anyway. If there is a tool which they can use for correcting, um, the motivation should be there. Um, then what they are correcting is highly valuable. What contributions can users make? I think that what they can contribute is highly valuable because, I mean, in the text there are so many words which are not interesting to human beings. And if you look at the, the search, searches of, of people, um, it's very specific what they are looking for. And with that tool they could in some way um, uh, go for that, e.g. 50% of all full text searches go for person names. Um, yeah, since we store all the contributions in the Alto files, um, the next user has a benefit from what the user already has done, other users have done, so um, yeah, they can actually see it uh, they see it in blue and in gray. And how to evaluate users and their contributions, uh, we didn't tackle that problem. This should be clearly done. Okay, a lot sh can be done and should be done to improve this uh, very first version of uh, the user interface. Um, we will put it online as open source package and uh, yeah, we are happy to to get some good ideas and, and especially the edit distance um, provided by the Lucene engine will not be really the best method to present um, word snippets to the user, so there are, something should be done and also to use the data maybe for some kind of machine learning uh, would be obvious that this could be a feasible path. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, slightly overrun our time. Uh, I guess there is some time for... Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you. Very interested uh, to try this out, actually. Um, we have our Lucene index. We have the word uh, coordinates, etc. Um, very great also that you're planning to make this an open source release. Just 2014, that's still like seven months. Can you maybe make it a bit more concrete, or could we apply for something like beta testing or something like that? Yeah, probably during summer or until early September, October, something like that. 
Okay, and, uh, and another question just quickly. So you store the corrections also in the Alto file. Um, do you store them as variants or do you actually, uh, I think you substitute the, the string in the Alto file, uh, the corrected we set, one? We set the correction status as true and uh, uh, alternative. So, so the string will be replaced in the Alto? No. No. We keep the original and write the... the right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, okay. Sure. Thanks. I think this is uh, excellent work. Very interesting thinking. Uh, two small questions. Um, one is when there's an approval, you take it the first time through rather than uh, having like a majority uh, voting system like Digitalkut. And I think even the concert did uh, only approved corrections after there were a certain number of approvals. Um, have you thought about that with the system, or would it be easy to implement? Yeah, I, I'm not totally sure if I, um, I understood what you mean, but meant. But uh, what I can say is, cu currently we just approve um, some snippets. It would make sense also to to mark them as false um, in some cases, but not to say it was false compared to this. But we do know that it is false. Yeah. Which, because it was a quick win, it would be easy to do this, and then to have a separate list where you where you uh, gather all the false candidates and and treat them separately. Okay. The other question I had: um, it sounds like this is designed specifically for Alto. Um, would it be possible to implement it with other um, other formats? I think so. Um, Johnny, will you say a word on that? to implement it on other XML files? Yeah, actually, it could all be configured by some parameters. So I think it's only a work of five or 10 minutes, maybe, to make it possible for another standard. Uh. Yes, yeah, so this seems a very interesting tool. So supposing, Gunter, a library uh, would use this on their already available collection, of course, they would do this. And a couple of power users would come and do this, and we'd have these altered Alto files next to the others. How would we go about versioning? How would we, do you have a solution for this? Because this would, you know, we have a new and better version, uh, which means you replace something. Yeah, as I already said, it's just updating the Alto file, but it really, uh, leaves the, the, the actual content um, as it is in the Alto file. Sorry. Just provides one more um, token, and this is done rather fast. Um, the question is, uh, you would need, that's something which I had in my last slide, um, how do you um, um, avoid misuse of the system, so you want to make sometimes um, um, yeah, that you get the status of a certain date or so. Yeah. yeah so you need kind of logging or whatever. Yeah, that's but not the, no. That can be done, by sure. Okay, thanks. Uh, last question. Um, my question is, um, you, uh, you had in your slide that uh, the maximum edit distance is two. So is there a danger that you will uh, let users only correct things that are still really recognizable? And yes. Could, are you planning on doing something that... As I said, I mean, there are other edit distances which would be much more interesting. And what we have heard in the first talk um, goes very much in, in, in that direction. That Levenstein distance is not enough for that case. So you could think on error profiles coming from some other guys. Okay. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> <laughs>